Monday morning, Free Spool and Keith with you. Post frontal conditions, and we're after kokanee today. Remember, the limit's five. So come along and let's get rigged up and get on it. Fish number one, decent size. All right, I'm marking a fair number of fish, but they're just not putting their lips on the, on the bait. So it's a, it's a bit of a challenge today so far. One fish on, that's it. It's time for a story. So my buddy, and I will call him John, visited Australia several years ago and we stayed in, flew into originally Adelaide and it's a little bit snobby. Most of Australia is not at all, but uh, German settlers were the first to settle there in Adelaide and they claimed they were the only ones that weren't forced to go there either through labor or prison sentences and things of that nature. So we uh, were staying at a campground because we're going to drive them around for five weeks or so and we happened to uh, go look for a place to get something to eat and a bar combined to have some beer and stuff and we go by this place and there's a sign out front that says if you can make the horse cry you will drink all night free and so will re the rest of the patrons so of course naturally we wanted to see what's going on so we went in well we sit at the bar because we can order food at the bar. And we asked the bartender, we said, okay, so what's the deal with the horse? And he says, oh, there's a horse right out to back there. You just pop open that, that little half door there, the top, and you, you remember the show, Mr. Ed? And we're like, yeah, we're old enough, we know that. And he said, yeah, the horse will put his head in. So um, I look at uh, my buddy John, John looks at me and he says, I got this. So he walks up and I see him whisper in the horse's ear and all of a sudden the horse just starts busting out laughing you know in the horse way and the bartender looks at me and then looks at john and says well that's not going to work you guys are buying your own drinks tonight so we had a good time met a bunch of locals and uh, it got a little bit of history of the place and so it was fun well we had one more night to stay in adelaide before we decided to leave and so John says, let's go back to that place. I'm pretty sure I can get us uh, drinks and the rest of the patrons and we'll make a... I said, yeah, whatever. You're going to probably make them laugh again. He said, no, no, I got this. So we go to the bar. We sit down. The bartender remembers us. It's the same bartender. And he says, same deal. You want to try that again? Fish on. All right, fish number two in the boat. Fish number two, and they're getting better sized. So picking back up where I left off. We're back in the same bar. We're sitting at the at the um, bar. The bartender walks up and says, "All right, you guys know the rules. Give it a good old Yankee try." So. My friend John looks at me and says, I got it this time. So he walks back to the spot. The horse pokes his head out. He walks up, pulls his ear up, whispers in his ear. And all of a sudden, the sound coming out of that horse was unbelievable. He was bawling his head off. I mean, it was just insane how much he was crying. And so we were trying to figure out what was going on. And John walks back with a big proud smile on his face. And the bartender says, all right, uh, drinks are on, uh, on the house for everybody in here. And so everyone's stoked and stuff. And the bartender says, well, 
I gotta find out. Nobody in 20 years has made that horse cry. What did you do? What did you say? And so my buddy John says, well, it was quite simple. The first night was, was rehearsal. And the guy said, what do you mean? He says, well, uh, I walked up to the horse. I whispered his, in his ear and said, my penis is bigger than his. And that's why the horse started laughing. The bartender looks at him and says, okay. And he said, well, what'd you say today to get him to cry? Well, you guys didn't notice, but I showed him my penis. Well, that's all I gotta do is tell a joke and I'll hook up with the fish. That's the rules. A little dinner tonight. Come along. All right, free spooling Keith coming at you with the conclusion of this trip. Four fish, one late as I was packing up. Not as many boats on a Saturday as I would have expected. The bite was slower than the last time I was out. You saw the catch part of the video. What you're going to see now is the cook part. So the preparation, you're not going to see me slicing and dicing the fish. Basically, all I did is gutted them, cut their heads off. And what I'll do now is cut along the spine. There's some great videos on YouTube on how to do it. It's a delicate fish. Kokanee, as many of you are aware, is a landlocked sockeye salmon, but it's a little more mild and more delicate, meaning temperamental, in how you handle it. So you want to make sure it stays cold from the minute you catch it. And what I'm going to do is slice it down the backbone. I don't even take the skin off, and you'll see the, the why I don't in the process to come. But make sure you have a sharp knife, a very good sharp fillet knife to to cut the kokanee because you wanna get as much meat as you can. What's gonna follow here is uh, a very short and simple process to um, season the kokanee. Before you put them, you make a little boat like you can see right here out of foil, then get some Pam and spray it on it so it doesn't stick too bad. And what we're gonna do is put the kokanee that's now halfway filleted and I only say halfway because I leave the skin on and cook it skin down and that'll stick even with the non-stick on there and you can pretty much peel the meat out and you'll see that process when we get there. So where I'm going to head right now is I'm going to turn on the barbecue and set that for about medium high heat. Cooking time you're looking at between six and eight minutes you're going to leave these boats open so that you can check and see when the meat's done because you don't want to overcook it. There are some small fine scales on the kokanee. Uh, if you get some on the uh, fleshy meaty side, you can either pick them out. They're hard to even notice because they are um, super small. And so I'd avoid eating the skin side. Some people do, unless you do scale it. And you can actually just put your faucet on the spray um, function and do high speed and get most of the scales off. So before you start to do any of the seasoning or anything else, I recommend patting the, the fillets dry. So here we go. I'm, uh, I've got them dry and I'm gonna place them in the boats on the, um, the Pam sprayed sides with the skin down. And as you can see, they're pretty delicate. If you grab the, the, um, the salmon at all with any kind of grip, you'll uh, dent the meat and it'll make it a little bit softer. All right, so what we're gonna season it with is a little butter patties, some lemon juice. I don't put the lemons itself on. Some garlic powder, some pepper, and then, man, you got to give it some bite because that's how you got the fish is from a bite. Put some Tabasco on it or whatever um, seasoning, hot seasoning of your choice. And if you watch the process, it's going to be um, just a little bit of each because you don't want to overpower the fish with with anything else because it tastes so good all by itself. I'm not a huge fish fan, but I do enjoy kokanee and halibut, which happen to be two of the species that I do target and catch. And I found that if you put too much 
whatever on it, you lose the taste of the fish and you end up eating whatever the flavor is. Um, one of the things that I think in addicted fishing video, Cameron mentioned that you can put some of that artichoke dip on it. I did that once and put way too much on. So if you wanna experiment and try that, I'm not gonna do that here. Um, just make sure you don't uh, put too much of the artichoke heart dip on there. So here we go. I'm gonna cut a couple of patties of butter for each. When you put the garlic salt on, because of the the pour, uh, make sure you put it in your hands first before you dump it on, because otherwise it will be very, um, very uh, salty. Uh, as you saw, just sprinkle and season with pepper to taste. Just dab a little bit of the garlic pepper, not too much. You don't want to overpower it. And then um, I like Tabasco. My wife doesn't object to it, so, and we like it pretty liberally. So a little Tabasco on there. And as I say, you can use uh, your, your hot sauce of choice. And then last but not least is the lemon. Now, I, you know, some people cook it with the lemon on it. I think sometimes that adds uh, too much to it. I like to just uh, slice the lemon and squeeze it on. And the beauty of the lemon is you can um, not only, um, you know, just watch out for the uh, seeds that are, that'll come out. Um, the beauty of the lemon is you can then put it down your um, disposal if you happen to clean your fish and use that side side to get rid of um, some of the, the lingering fish smell. So that's pretty much it. It's ready to, to rock and roll at this point. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going to wait for the, the grill to heat up and uh, we'll pick up when I put it on the grill. All right, this is the end result. And of course the taste test is the final and I'll bring an objective party in to taste it and see what she thinks. Delicious, nice heat. It's a very simple but tasty recipe and doesn't take any time at all. Appreciate all you watching. If you see or like this content, please comment, subscribe and hit the like button. And if you want to see more of this kind, look right up here. There's more.